Hi, welcome to a new video, and I want to look at a um, another camera today. So this is part of a series where I'm looking at cameras that I used to own in the past and have now rebought um, in 2023. So this is a camera that I first bought in 1991, um, only the second new camera I ever bought out of a total of three new cameras. That's how many new cameras I bought in my entire photographic life. Three. And I have had literally hundreds of cameras and I bought three new. Um, and there's a reason why I stopped buying new cameras, but that's a subject for another video and another day. So what is this camera? Well, first of all, a little bit of a confession. I'm, I am slightly cheating on this. Um, the camera in question is this let me just get it to focus on that hopefully it will it is a nikon f601 from 1991 um i believe in the us it was called the n6006 um so n6006 uh, now they actually did two versions of this they did the f601 which i've got here but they also did the f601m and the f601m um, wasn't autofocus it basically lost the autofocus and didn't have a pop-up flash it was without a shadow of a doubt one of the worst cameras i ever owned because if you put manual focus so pure Nikon manual focus lenses on there um, you lost most of the functionality because they didn't have the necessary connectors to be able to talk to most of the modes on the camera um, but if you bought the manual focus lenses um, well manual focus camera uh, autofocus lenses back then did not have nice smooth um, focus by wire that they do on modern cameras um, and they didn't have much in the way there was no focus peeping or any of that nonsense and even the dots to indicate when you were in focus were they were really bad so it was a horrible experience I did not keep the 601 M for very long at all I don't have fond memories of it I really don't know why I saved myself well actually I do it was about a hundred pound difference between the 601 M and the 601 and being perfectly honest <laughs> I couldn't afford the difference stupid looking back on it but there we go so I bought a 601 rather than the 601m i wasn't doing that to me uh do to myself again so what's it like as a camera in 2023 You will, as this video goes through, see some of the results um, and you can judge them for yourself. The film used here is um, Lomography's uh, Colour um, Negative 100 ASA film. I'm actually reasonably impressed with it. I expected it to be far more garish than it actually is. Um, and it's proven to be capable of some quite good um, subtle colours and tones in there without being overly saturated. So I'm actually quite impressed with it, more than I was expecting um, to be. But let's talk about the camera itself so what we have as i say is a 35 millimeter film camera uh, built-in motor drive autofocus um, full range of modes so you've got your your usual culprits um, program modes uh, aperture priority shutter priority and um, full manual on there uh, matrix spot and evaluative metering on there in fact actually I'm just going to have to check that on the metering I can't remember if it's got yes it does have spot metering just wanted to check that for you um, built-in flash TTL um, I believe yes it's got DX coding with manual override for the DX coding metal shutter easy load it's actually reasonably well put together it's it's a decent heft in the hand <coughs> the buttons on it on 
this side are rubbery with screen printed labels on them so there is a chance that they are going to wear out and wear away lcd panel for most of the information here um, and interestingly enough only one control dial which normally would put me off but this still even for um aperture aperture priority modes and everything bar program actually still uses the aperture ring on the lens um, so the one control dial doesn't actually cause you any issues with this camera at all um, It's actually reasonably well put together. Oh, yep, yeah, sorry, my apologies. Um, you've got manual, continuous, and continuous focus tracking on the autofocus, but don't expect a great deal out of the autofocus. You have a whole one autofocus point slap bang in the center. It is not the quickest autofocus in the world, but this is a camera that is from 1991. Literally, this is 30 year old technology in here. Um, exposure lock on the back so it, it's got everything that you could need one nice touch on there um, certainly I appreciate it is it will take a standard threaded cable release on there which is quite nice uh, unusual you don't find many cameras of this type from this era with that still on there so that's a nice choice um, and a nice touch so Overall, it's a good, really well-specified camera um, that, in my opinion, puts out some really nice results. Um, the focus is quick enough for general purpose everyday use, and overall, it, it just it works really well. Um, far better than my memory had served me looking back over it you know, years later. Um, I think, yeah, the, the 601 M's nobody should touch them with a barge pole horrible horrible things the 601 however is an extremely solid camera it does absolutely everything you need and more it's well built it is really well put together it's it's reasonably comfortable the grip is a bit oversized um it would be nice if it took double a's but it doesn't it takes um crp2 batteries but they are still fairly easy to pick up um, and generally about 20 to 30 rolls of film it will work with depending on how much you use the flash don't use the flash a great deal and you'll get a lot of shots out of it um, is this still a camera that is relevant in 2023 The simple answer to that is in all honesty yes absolutely now I've, I've talked about a few cameras since I started the channel up and most of them I've said I wouldn't recommend people get for various reasons which makes me sound like a bit of a party pooper but this if you're looking for a first camera and getting into film I would absolutely recommend with, without a shadow of a doubt but people won't buy them. And I know why. Um, and that's because if I just turn around a second, and I, I know it's a Canon, I don't have a Nikon equivalent. Uh, I've got a Minolta and I've got a um, Canon equivalent, but people want cameras that look like this. People want cameras that are fully manual or primarily fully manual, mechanical, and look old. That is, sorry, that is the issue with this it doesn't look as old it could arguably be mistaken for a semi-modern digital slr um, and i think that's what puts people off but if you are willing to look past that what you get is a camera that is incredibly well put together um, and most importantly is absurdly cheap you see i paid 25 pounds for the body 
£25 for a camera that does all of this and gives you these results. I, I think that's absolutely insane value for money um, for a film camera, given the prices that film cameras fetch. I have literally seen Zenit bodies more expensive than this. You can buy one of these, body only, for less money than a Practica. That's absolutely insane. And it opens up the Nikon lens series to you. Now, yes, because of its age, it's not going to work with all of the lenses, but what it will work with is all of the original AF Nichols. And these are, again, really reasonably priced. Um, take this one, for example. So this is the original AF Nickel 50mm f 1.8D. These you can pick up, depending on the condition, for around about 60 to 80 pounds. Now, what that effectively means is you can have a film camera that will churn out amazingly good results with excellent matrix metering in it, every single whistle and bell you could need, but also giving you the full manual control that you need for less than 100 pounds. Now, that to me it is an absolute bargain, and it also gives you access to a really good lens series as well. And keep in mind that as you move about, these lenses will work with more impressive bodies. But also, if you do then decide to delve into the world of digital, you can carry these lenses over to a hell of a lot of digital bodies as well. So this lens I also use, for example, on my Nikon D7000, and I also use it on this, my Fuji S3 Pro. So that lens will work on there. It will work on my D7000. So for £100 for a film camera, this, this to me is a no-brainer. But I also know that most people won't buy it because it doesn't look the part or it arguably does too much for you. Well, it only does as much for you as you want it to do. Yes, you do lose some of the tactile feeling of winding on and things like that, but you're going to pay a premium for those. You absolutely are. Um, and it seems mad that you can pick something up this good, this cheap, and people constantly overlook it. But that's just my thoughts on it. I'm fortunate enough to be able to have a big collection of cameras and therefore this is just another one to add to that. But looking back on it, I'm really impressed. And do I think this is still relevant in 2023? If you're looking at starting film shooting, absolutely it is. Yes, if you're already film shooting, but you're mainly using compact cameras or viewfinder cameras and you're looking at a 35mm SLR, absolutely this is relevant and I would 100% recommend that somebody gets one of these if that's what they're in the market for. Hell, if you're just looking for a good, does it all, easy to use, light carry around, or reasonably light carry around 35mm film camera, it's a good buy. It's stupidly cheap, under £100 for this combo. So yeah, that's the um, Nikon F601 or F6006, as it is in the US, I believe. Um, let me know if you've ever owned one of these. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below around this. And if you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. And if you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos go live. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Take care. Bye.